Hello, my name's Andy and this is Sastronomical. Welcome to today's video. In this session, we're going to be seeing um, basically how we can parse key value pairs that are in an array into mappable values that we can use in Zapier. So typically, I, I get quite a lot of these when I work with customers and it's, it's always quite difficult to figure out how to extract key value pairs that come in um, like from an array of objects. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, the, the best way to show you would be to get right in and start. So welcome to today's video. Let's hop in. So as I said, we're going to learn how to parse JSON key value pairs into Zap, into array, into values that we can use in Zapier. So let's see what that looks like for now. So right now you can see I've got my Zap set up and I'm gonna catch a webhook. And this webhook, as you can see, is has got some information and you can see it's um it's about uh, Bitcoin data um if, if you're interested in that kind of thing. But you can see here we're just getting the, the, the exchange rate of USD, GBP and Euros and you can see that sadly these have come through as an array of objects, right? So BPI, um, we've got the first element in there, which is USD, the second is GVP, and the third is Euro. So you might be thinking, oh, that's quite simple. It's quite straightforward to map. And it looks like it should be. But as we can see, there's some indentation in here um, that we really need to pay attention to. So we've got the object, and then we've got the first element of the array, the second element of the array, and then the third. So splitting this out is actually going to be a lot harder than it seems. And I'll show you why. So let's say we want to bring in this into Airtable. So I'm going to bring this into to my Airtable. I'm going to create a record, right? We're just going to create a record into an Airtable. And as you can see, I'm just going to set this up. So I'm going to choose my base. And what do we want to call it? We want to call it... Um, ba, 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 Bitcoin, so I think I've got one in there, my Bitcoin base. Great, so we've got my Bitcoin base in there and um, we want to choose a table, so the ta just, uh, table one. And as we remember, we want to just bring in the exchange rate into my base. So I would choose the currency, right? And then I would, and then I would go on and choose the rate. So let's uh, start typing in currency. Okay, so we don't have currency in there, but you can see we've got code. Right, so you can see the code is unfortunately split up with USD, GBP and Euros, and there's no way to break these out. So what we really need to do is break them out into meaningful key value pairs. So we can do that in the following way. The first thing we want to do is use a formatting step. And as you probably know by now, formatting step allows you to manipulate data within Zapier. Uh, then I'm going to choose a utility. Um, and a utility is basically anything that's not text, numbers, or dates. So um, it can be a lookup table or a line itemizer. In this case, we're going to use the line item to text um, element, and or utility, I should say. And we're going to bring in the, um, the, the pieces that we want to map, right? So uh, as we remember, we want to bring in the code Plus, we want to bring in the rate. So that's BPI code and BPI rate. Great, we've got both of them. But what we actually need to remember to do is split these out in some kind of way that allows us to take the data from this step into something meaningful. So let's say when we do this, we want to split these both out um, using some uh, some kind of thing that's not a comma. It needs to be something that you wouldn't typically see in the data. So um, that could be three stars. It could be a star. I, I like to use this one. I don't know why. But it could be something like that. Um, I'm going to use three stars just now. 
And that's the first half done. But what we actually also need to do if we want to bring these two together is separate out each individual line, right? And when we do that, we want to use something completely different from the one we just used, right? So we use three stars there. We might want to use uh, three lines. That might be a good idea. So that what we can expect from the output of this it will be um, a combined group of all of these elements, but split out with the stars and then split out with the lines. So uh, let's see what that looks like. Great, and we, when we click run, you can see that it's got all of the individual lines, which is perfect, right? USD, and it's got the rate. GBP, it's got the rate. And Euros, it's got the rate. So we've we set up the data um, really well in that structure. But then, as I said before, we also want to like bring all of these together so we can use them in a code step which is quite an advanced feature of Zapier, but what I found is that you actually don't need a lot of coding knowledge to use a code step in Zapier. Um, you just need some fundamentals, which I'm sure we will go through in this video and many other videos as we go through. So I'm gonna click uh, test, uh, retest this again, and we'll, we'll just see that. So we've got it USD, and the code, I'm sorry, and the value split out with the stars, and then we each individual line split out with these pipes. So what do we do next? Well, next of all, we actually want to bring these in to um, a code set so that we can uh, basically map the data. So I can just start typing code and, uh, and then um, we can uh, click run JavaScript. And we can call this uh, whatever we want. So the input data might be, we're gonna call it elephants, right? We're gonna call it elephants because um, I'm trying to show you that this input data, um, you can change this to be whatever you want it to be called. You just need to know that it's called elephants to use it in your code. And then we'll come, come back to that in a second. I don't know why I called it elephants, but I'm just gonna go with it. Now, you can see here that we're bringing in the text, right? So remember that we're not bringing in the individual lines, we're just bringing in the texts like that, right? So the first thing we want to do and this is hopefully going to explain why I've, um, I've brought in uh, the, the elephants, is because we want to actually create a variable in our JavaScript that externally brings in the data. So what I would just do is say const, and let's call it a text, and then we can say input data, right? And what we're doing here is we're grabbing the object input data. So this is input data and all of this data is part of the object input data. So what, uh, because we call this elephants, we would quite simply say input data dot elephants. And now if we wanted to call it something even more sensible, <clears throat> which we probably do, let's just call this text. So we call this text and you can see um, that instead of elephants here, we just change that to text. And you have created your very first variable in JavaScript, well done. That's half the battle in JavaScript, is creating variables. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually, um, well, we want to create an object, right, of, of all of this data. Um, so we want to create an empty object. And when we do that, we create an empty object with these curly brackets. Now, curly brackets in JavaScript basically mean you're creating it or you're talking about an object. Um, which we don't need to worry about too much for this because I will give you the code at the end of the session. So look down in the description for the code um, and I'll, I'll either link to it there or I'll give you it there. Great. So then what we need to do is use the text object. So that text object that we've got here, if we wanted to return that, um, let's see what that looks like. So I, I do this a lot when I'm, using, when I'm running JavaScript. I just, I just quickly test to see what, what the output will be. So if I click this, you can see here that the text will be exactly what um, we pass through. And that is because um, we defined the variable and we returned the variable. And the, the, we returned that variable in the output object, which is what Zapier is looking for when we get the data. Great. So what do we want to do next? We want to start mapping our currencies, right? So remember right back at the very start, we wanted to map 
USD to its uh, corresponding exchange rate. So what we can do is, um, is basically say to this object, for every single element in that text field, we, we then want to break out each individual element. So in this case, we can say, um, we, because this is a text variable, we actually want to break it out and split it into an array, right? So we can actually see what that looks like. So I'm going to break these out. In fact, we want to break it out with the pipes, not the stars yet. So let's see what that looks like now. So remember before we had this text, so what we're doing by using the split prototype in JavaScript is we are going to turn that text value into an array, right? And that array is going to be split down the middle at each time we see those pipes. So you can see instead of the text um, returning, we've actually got three individual elements, which we can then further break down and turn into our object. So let's do that now. So we want to say for every single element, and there's three elements in here, we want to then create a key value pair, very simply. So we say text, and remember, we are um, grabbing this now, which is now an array and is no longer a text uh, value. We can say text dot for each, and for each is a um, array prototype in JavaScript. Again, I'm getting technical. We don't need to think about these things too much for this, for the purposes of this. And then we can say x. We can call it whatever we want when we put this through. So for each, and then bring it in and run a function. So we want to run this function, and we can. And I, I normally um, break it out a little bit like that, just so we can see where it all ends. So you see this curly bracket ends um, here. Uh, we want to have another one actually. So we want to say this curly bracket ends here, and this one ends here. So that's the normal bracket ends there and the curly bracket ends at the end. And then we can do whatever we want in here. And in this case, we want to create a key value pair from that array. And we want to say uh, name and then value. And then in this case, we can say it equals the, um, the element we pass through. So we're grabbing that. And we're just saying for every one of them, we want to split that again. So if you remember split, we, we initially split it with the pipes, and now we want to split it with, I guess, most of you got it, well done. I'm assuming, yeah, we want to split it with the stars. I don't know if you got it, I'm sure you did. Then, very finally, we just want to um, pass the name of the object, basically make that the value of the object. So if it's USD, we want it to be called USD. If, we, if it's GBP, we want it to be called GBP. So then we just pass the name through and we make that the value. So what should we expect as an output here? Well, hopefully if I've done this correctly, what we will see is we will have three brand new variables all named this, the correct thing. And instead of outputting the text this time, we can actually um, output the object as well. So I'm going to output that object. And let's run it and see what happens. Great. So you can see that was the, this was the text that we changed. And by running that little piece of code, we've now created a brand new object. Instead of it all being uh, one, two, and three, we've got USD and we've got the exchange rate GBP, we've got the exchange rate and Euro, we have got the exchange rate. Now this gives us the, um, the opportunity to then say, okay, so um, for Euro, I can say this is Euro and now I know exactly which one is Euro because I can look that up. And you can see it's now easy to pass that through. And that's it. I hope that was helpful. Um, and if you don't understand it, don't worry. I hope this was um, this helps you along your journey anyway. Check out my YouTube channel for more videos like this. Uh, I'll be creating as many um, as I can, or as uh, I, I've got a big list to go through of, of things that I think you might find useful, I can help you with. Don't get too bogged down with the JavaScript. If, if you are struggling, you can just copy the JavaScript that I, um, that I add to the comments. And, um, and really, all you need to do is remember the naming convention, right? If this is called elephants, 
or let's call it zebras now, <laughs> right? If this is called zebras, you need to make sure you bring that in as zebras into your variable. That's one of the most important things you can learn. And if you take anything away, that's the most important thing. But like I said, I'll put this down in the, the uh, notes for you as well. If you like this content, if you want to see more, please do subscribe to my channel. This is my second video, so um, I probably have zero subscribers. So if you're my first one, <laughs> thank you. And yeah, um, like it if you liked it. And if I could provide you more, with more context, please let me know. Always happy to, to help out. And if you want to reach me, you can, um, you can do that via my website. Thanks so much for paying attention and uh, I hope this was useful to you. And if it wasn't, that's fine. You just go grab the code and put it into your Zapier step and uh, you'll be done.